Hello, my friends. Welcome to my corner. When I began my systematic exploration of the Nobel Prize winners in literature almost 20 years ago now, I was not sure where to start with Patrick White, but there were two books that fell into my hands quite by accident. One of them was The Tree of Man, okay? and the other one was Voss, the one that I want to explore today. I decided to start back then with The Tree of Man, which is uh, the story of a family that is struggling to live in the Australian hills. And it was only many, many years later that I finally decided to read Voss. Um, I really liked this novel. I will say it's an excellent novel. It features remarkable characters and an inimitable style, which I think are good traits to have when you're uh, dealing with a novel. So I would say if you are new to Patrick White's fictional world and you would like to explore his work, Voss is a pretty good place to start. Let's talk a little bit first about the plot. And Voss, the novel, is the story of Johann Ulrich Voss, uh, an explorer who puts together, organizes an expedition into the Australian wilderness. So we hear about this expedition from the beginning to the end of the novel and all the hardships that Voss and his companions experience throughout this journey as they traverse the wild territory of Australia. However, and this is a big however here, uh, Voss the novel is also the story of Laura Trevelyan. She is a very strong and very witty woman that the protagonist, Voss, meets in the first chapter of the novel. They have a very brief meeting, but then they make a very lasting impression on each other. They literally see each other for hours, right? Just hours together. But they remain in each other's thoughts throughout the rest of the novel. So it's one of those encounters that basically change the people's lives, right? I don't know if you've ever experienced something like that, but it's one of those things, you know, the, those life-altering moments that they share. And that has to do with the whole structure of the novel, too, which is my next point. I see Voss as a brilliant example of montage, okay? Because what we have here is basically an alternation of episodes from Voss's expedition with those of Laura's interactions with friends and acquaintances. There is also a very important subplot here, as Laura tries to care for a child that does not belong to her, right? To her, this child comes to symbolize love, so she's determined to care for this child, but her family and her friends are against this, so she has to deal with that obstacle right there. So I would say Voss is, in a sense, a story of parallel lives, and that's what makes it very interesting to me. What the montage suggests is that the vicissitudes that Voss has to face in the wilderness are just as complex and just as shaping as those that Laura faces at home. Those experiences, you know, dealing with family, acquaintances, friends, and all of that. So the two characters, even though they are separated, they remain together in the distance. That is the fantastic thing to me about Voss, the novel, that it explores a connection that happens not in the physical plane, but beyond that. Um, let's talk a little bit about Patrick White and Australia. In the context of the Nobel Prize, Patrick White has come to represent Australia because so far he has been the only winner of the Nobel Prize in literature from Australia. J. M. Kutsia became a citizen of Australia, but that was three years after he won uh, the Nobel Prize. Now, here's an ironic thing. It is very well known that Patrick White felt as an outsider in the land down under. He always considered himself to be a Londoner because he had been born in the English capital. And here's another thing to consider. All of his works virtually were habitually criticized and dismissed by Australian critics, at least at the time that they were published, right? So we have here a very, very ironic situation. And here's the thing, the hero of Voss is a foreigner, an outsider, 
who is looked down on by the locals, right? So you can see the connection right there. It's very obvious between Patrick White, the author, and the protagonist of his novel here. This also has a lot to do with the ending that White decided to give to his novel. In his autobiography, Flaws in the Glass, he talks about this and he says that the ending that he gave to Voss was out of a sense of anger, almost. I am paraphrasing here and, and summarizing his impressions, but he says there was a lot of pain involved in the writing of this novel. This was a particularly difficult text for him to write. Um, talking about Voss and The Tree of Man, I would like to compare these two very briefly since they are the two novels by Patrick White that I have read. And I will be honest with you, I found The Tree of Man to be a more pleasurable read than Voss. Okay, so in terms of the enjoyment of the reading of the text, I will say that The Tree of Man made a better impression on me. It is a novel of the land, okay, what in Spanish we call the Novela de la Tierra and it focuses on a family, right? So I really like that. You don't get that in Voss. So that was one thing that I liked about The Tree of Man. And also another thing that struck me was that the first chapters of Voss moved maybe a little bit too slow for my taste. Now, after the second half, when you get to half the midpoint of the novel, from that point on, the, the novel Voss is, is a total page turner. I will tell you that. But the first part was a little bit slow to me. And why is that? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the structure of the novel mirrors Voss's expedition. So if I had to, you know, give you a, an opinion on why the novel is so slow at the beginning, it's because it mirrors the journey that Voss, the character, uh, embarks upon. I would say, though, that the structure of Voss is much more interesting than the structure of The Tree of Man, because we have, once again, parallel stories, parallel destinies here. It follows a man and a woman separately. So that is much more interesting. I would say if the Tree of Man favors a progression of events, Voss is more concerned with character development. So if you like character development, if that is your thing when it comes to a novel that you read, then I would definitely say go with Voss and not with the Tree of Man. But, you know, this is a matter of taste, like uh, so many other things. The events that the characters experience in the novel really give shape to their lives, but they also illuminate their personalities. So that's where you find the character development in this text. Basically, what you have is characters in conflict with the world around them. In the case of Voss, you have a character that is in conflict with nature, that is struggling also against human frailty. And in the case of Laura, on the other hand, you have a character who is grappling with social convention and with manners. So the two struggles are equally difficult. That is what the novel is saying here. So, uh, bottom line, though I really enjoyed reading The Tree of Man more than I did reading Voss, I would say Voss is clearly the superior novel. Now, here's an interesting thing. White did not consider either one of these to be his best work. In Flaws in the Glass, he cites three novels in this order. The Solid Mandala, The Ant's Story, and The Twyborn Affair. Those, he said, were his best work. So it's something to consider. Although, as you know, uh, authors are particularly prone to be poor judges on, of themselves, right? But I think it's interesting when an author actually, you know, declares himself and says, or herself and says, this is my favorite work. This is the one that I prefer. It's almost like choosing a favorite child or something like that, right? So if you're new to White, I recommend either one of these novels, okay? The Tree of Man, Voss, either one will work for you. They will give you some kind of an idea about life in Australia. And also both of them will give you a very satisfying experience of the author's beautiful prose, descriptions, and really remarkable characters that he deals with. So what's the next step uh, for me? I have many books by Patrick White still. I would like to continue with The Solid Mandala, since he said that was his favorite of the ones that he had written. But I also have the collection of short stories slash novellas, The Cockatoos. I also have Flaws in the Glass that I have not read yet. 
and I do have a copy of the Twyborn Affair somewhere so as you can see I have plenty by Patrick White to keep myself entertained and I do look forward to reading these because the two books that I have read by him really have inspired me to uh, read more by this great author. Do you have any questions, comments, recommendations? Have you read anything by Patrick White that you think I should check out? You know, I always welcome any of these thoughts, recommendations, comments, questions, etc. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, my two cents on Patrick White's Voss. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.